And welcome to our next meeting for the South Texas Google Educator Group. And I would like to for you all to introduce yourself. Uh, Alfonso, would you like to start? Sure. My name is Alfonso Mendoza, and I'm the Instructional Software Specialist for Sherryland ISD. And I've been there for three years in this position and just excited about all things tech. So hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Maggie. Uh, hi, hi everyone. I'm Maggie Ojeda. I work at Region One. I've been there for five years, and I'm excited to be joining the meetup this afternoon. Awesome. Yay, okay, Maggie. <laughs> so we have two things on the agenda, and I'm sure we're gonna have more as uh, we go through. <laughs> and I like the chat. That's awesome. I'm hearing a silent echo. Slight echo, sorry. Oh, slight. Oh, yeah, I misread. OK, um, I'm not sure how how that. But um, well, I hope it's OK. I do not hear an echo on Maggie's end. Okay, no, okay, no worries. Maybe it's just my settings. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I hear it too. It's okay. Uh, we'll just go through the next thing. Okay, so guess what I'm excited about? <laughs> uh, what aren't you Google, excited about? Google Stadia? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome too. <laughs> So the Google Innovator Academy. Oh, and, yeah, yes. definitely excited about that. And very nervous. This when is, is that my, happening or, or what's going on with that? Did you submit your application again? No, I'm starting on it. I, uh, I'm looking through it and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my with what I have so far. So uh, let me just show you real quick. Uh, if um, if you're not aware of the application, it's a lengthy application, including a video. And... Uh, oh my, it's in Spanish. Oh my. Yeah, Mexico 20. Yes, okay, Mex 20. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm gonna apply for Mexico and uh, Sunnyvale. That's a same here. Okay, so on the Google Educator Group, I posted a hey, help me if you know anything about it, and I have the questions and my answers. Um, this I have to provide more information, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, pretty much for my challenge, I'm gonna stick with the same one that I did before, but. Before I get into the innovator thing, uh, let me start with uh, Google certifications overall. So there's the educator level one, which costs $10. And if you need help with a certification, I put a link there. Level two is $25. The trainer, you require the level two, if I remember correctly. There is also a trainer test, which is $15. And then there's the G Suite cloud certification, $75. A, if it's for students, which I'm having my students test, uh, I'm just trying to get with uh, my CTE coordinator to see how and when this can happen. It's just $37 per student. I took this one the for the for myself i passed it so i know maggie you also did yes sir that's All awesome right. fonz if you want to take it uh we might be able to swing a voucher Let oh know. perfect yeah that'll yeah. work i'm down for it yeah that's we'll do awesome. it through megabyte. I mean, just let me know send me an email okay but yes maybe. yes carlos what did you think about it it's i think it's like the level two but instead of um Instead of education questions, it was business questions. Yes, yes. It was heavy on sheets. 
it was crazy bad. And uh, for you know, it's like a lot, a lot on that. But I was gonna tell you, I have the W nine for your CTE coordinator so that they can start your your business process for your students, Carlos, if you want it. Oh. I have the W nine for Proctor U. That took me like a month to get it. Oh wow! So, but I but I have the W nine. I uh, I can help them. So just tell them to call me, and that way we can help we can help you get started. So you can since you already you know started working with your kids. Yes. I'm sure you're using applied digital skills because now in applied digital skills, they have the sequence of lessons already yes. set up for this test. So it's yeah. cool. Okay. Yes, I'll get a hold of you as soon as, uh, well, I'll send you an email right after this. Yes, absolutely. I can get it to you. Okay. That's awesome. I'm glad you're going to be doing that with the students already. Yes. We do plan on doing that also, but it won't be until um, probably another month before we can work with our gear kids, but we're going to be doing that. Awesome. So I'll be bothering you soon. Yes, <laughs> please do. <laughs> okay. So, and now for the main event, the Google innovator, which Ooh. is what I'm applying <laughs> and I'm sure y'all are applying as well. Yep. Getting look, look I have an old application for innovator, but I, I might revive it. If, if y'all are like psyching, like just really, Hoping me to get pumped up about it. I don't know. I, I, have, I might have too many. It. Just I, now, you know what I did for my person on my personal settings. I switched over to Spanish actually, but for another project that I'm mm -hmm. working on. Actually, and so I've been trying to learn the vocabulary, like vinculo. Like I didn't know that was you know <laughs> URL, and and uh, almacén is a drive, and so you know it's cool. I, I actually know some of the Google terminology now. <laughs> There for another, because awesome. of another project not totally related to anyway to innovator but well, that's you cool need to, so, you need to get on it because so uh, guys, are, that you're bilingual so, so, so listen, yeah are y'all doing it then in spanish the application i'm doing spanish? yeah i'm doing my application in spanish and subtitling in english and then if i don't make it to mexico i'm doing english for sunnyvale or sunnydale and subtitling it in spanish so, so uh, that's a helpful, cool. helpful tip there from innovators that I got. I've been interviewing innovators left and right all of last week. That's and great. so a lot of the, the insight on that um, that they give and a lot of them, uh, they're like, well, you know, just if your video just happens to come across and all this other stuff. So uh, just definitely, definitely do it. And especially the bilingual portion, that's going to be huge, I think, this year for because with the people that I've been speaking to um, that are from Mexico themselves and are part of the academy that I got an interview with, they're like the bilingual portion is like a big plus. I think it helps. So like Carlos, like you have high like academic Spanish language and so do you, Fons, right? I don't think, I think so. Like, yeah. I think so. Like I maybe maybe I feel just a little like not confident in my academic Spanish language, but I will say it has been helpful when I switched my language to Spanish. And mm -hmm. I did that about, I'm telling y'all about four or five months ago for a total other related project. Actually, Fonz, you, you, you're gonna help me with that one. Yes, of course. <laughs> and so it's gonna be for a community project for in Spanish. Um, and it's a bilingual event actually. And it's just some Google apps, but it's for a community project but it's cool. I, I had no idea that y'all were that that the application could be in Spanish and stuff. Yeah, of it's course. Cool. You gotta get awesome. get out get out of that comfort zone, Maggie. Just get it done. <laughs> hey, no, but just just put it just put it out there, girl. Just I mean, what what's the worst that can happen? They call you and say, Hey, you got accepted. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just getting out of the, the 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 comfort zone, your intention, your problems. Uh, or your problem statement that you'll have. And I think that'll be something good. I mean, I, I think like last year I was kind of nervous and scared because I, I didn't know what to expect. I kind of went in there uh, just on my own, not really seeking any help. And then I said, no, this year, I was like, once I know when the cohorts are, I, like I immediately got in contact with some people that offered to help last year and been joining some meetings and some groups and just getting that feedback from them. And it's been extremely helpful. That's great. So when's the application deadline? Okay, um, let me look it up real quick, but 
It's uh, Google Innovator. Just a quick search. I think it's what in April or for the Mexico April tenth. So April tenth, oh, we okay. don't have a lot of time to mm -mm. submit the application. Wow. And does it's, it cost? Does it have like a cost associated? Okay. Mm, you're sort of. <laughs> sort of. Yes, it's free, but you pay for travel and all of that stuff and oh my. Wait, then we're gonna have to do like chicken plate sales <laughs> <laughs> hey guys you know what i noticed that natividad is on natividad on on, on the dock yeah I wonder, she's on the dock but i she wonder if she's on, on the hangout the okay sorry i didn't mean to let me let see me if i can get a hold of her yes um maybe on the chat yeah, I'll see if I can like get hold of her that way. So yeah, so so y'all were saying though, y'all gonna do chicken plate sales? No, yes, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I do have some tips for that. Um, well, sort of. As a uh, teacher, I have donors choose, but uh, there's something called pledge sense for other educators, and. Uh, the way I'm saving is use, uh, doing stocks. So instead of saving money in the bank, because that's not going to do much with the money, um, purchasing stocks and uh, hopefully the stocks grow. Although right now with the coronavirus, they're going down. But uh, so the I had a question for you, I guess, and I get every district's different. I know like for our district, we're not allowed to use donors choose for PD at all whatsoever. Hey, Dr. Karen's here. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Karen. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, Dr. Karen. <laughs> How are y'all doing? doing? Doing great. great. Good. So I am late. You're but right. You're right. Just in time for somebody to tell us about how wonderful the innovator project uh the innovator academy is oh and it is it is it is i think i just turned off my camera um uh let's see as a matter of fact today i uh was just working with some people on a, a new project so the innovator project does not have to be just a a one-time deal um we, uh, I'm still working with uh, a few, um, one, one lady who was in my cohort and another one from another cohort. We met at an Energizer, which is something else that comes after. Mm -hmm. um, but our, our project is uh, encouraging girls to go into STEM careers. Awesome. So uh, it's called Girls Can, and our idea is to get um girls and uh to you know how you, they kind of get all excited about science in elementary school and then middle school they start dropping out of the stem subjects and it's just not cool and they don't go into coding and that's when you, you notice more boys getting into that kind of stuff so we're trying to encourage girls in the middle years to continue with stem and to continue with science and look for role models and so that's kind of the the project is to try to find uh, role models, and we, and we're talking with Jenny Maguera and um, cool. some some uh, other. You know, we're I'm, we're open for suggestions. We're just approaching you successful women STEM people and just asking them if they'll help us. We're doing uh, we want to do a TED talk and maybe some conferences and presentations and stuff like that. We're trying to think really big and outside the box. That's awesome. awesome. So that's all because of the innovator experience that I went through. So awesome. I encourage, yeah, I, I really encourage you to, um, to keep trying and keep applying and um, even just uh, getting together with the people who are applying, you know, those, those relationships will last a long time and, and just don't, um, don't be discouraged if you don't get it the first time, but, um, and also to maintain those relationships. The, um, you know, have you ever heard of Malcolm Gladwell? Malcolm uh, Gladwell. 
he's a he's an author. He wrote something called The Tipping Point. And uh, people who are good at, they call them loose, he calls them loose relationships where you may not be best friends with people, but every time you meet them, you seem to connect, you know? Mm -hmm. And so those kind of loose relationships where we, you're, you're, not, you're more than an acquaintance, but not really best friends, but just keep those kinds of relationships like people you meet at conferences and, and your Google trainer friends. And um, I like that. That's cool. It's, it's, it, it really helps. It, it takes you far. It really does. So anyway, that kind of helps, you know, it kind of helps to kind of think about the kind of connections that we make like online. Like I had seen you before online, Dr. Karen. And I know that oh. like my colleagues of Carlos and, and, uh, and Fonz, you know, they've, they've, I've, I've seen the interactions, but I've connected, I guess I knew of you through them. So it's kind of that connector concept in, you know, between us. Cool. You know, we just kind of connected in a certain way. So <laughs> they're part of my community and now we're yeah. part of this community. And so it kind of just kind of morphs into something neat. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And that's, um, and the older I get and the more uh, in, in the education community, more experienced I get with meeting people like Carlos and, um, Alfonso and um, uh, Maggie. Um, next time we see each other, please come come say hello, and you know you kind of reconnect every time, even if it's just every couple of years. Or at TCEA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So speaking of uh, making those connections, um, a few friends. Twitter friends. Um, I'm not sure if you know who Luis Pertus is. The name's familiar, but uh, I don't know the context. Um, he is, um, he's also an innovator from NYC19. Uh, okay. He's a friend of uh, Federico Centeno. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Federico is the first and up to up to one point he was the only innovator in uh, Colombia. Oh wow. And Luis Pertus started this Twitter chat called Future GEI. Mm. Yes, I have seen him on the uh, hangout. One one thing that you you get um, invited to when you're in, in, in an innovator is you, there's this chat. I've been in the same Hangouts chat since 2017 with the same people from my cohort. So you get, and then if you go to an innovator, which is kind of like a refresh, you have to do, once you become an innovator, I know you all are going to, you, uh, once a year, you, you have to log kind of like our trainer thing, but you just log one thing into the, in, the app. The activity app. Um, and then uh, if you go to an innovator, that is one of the um, activities that you can do. And so this Hangouts chat is still going. And so I went to an uh, Energizer in Philadelphia right before ISTE. And then I also went to one in Mountain View the year before that. Um, it wasn't uh, with a conference, but it was just a, a an energizer. But that's really cool because you get to meet people from other uh, innovator cohorts, and um, so so that when they do things like these Twitter chats, then you kind of know oh, the name the names are familiar. So how often is this Twitter chat? This Twitter chat is gonna it's right now one question a week when there's nothing like pending but once the application or the week before the application and after the application before announcements mm -hmm. uh the, it's gonna ramp up to one question per day oh, or at least wow. that's the goal so yeah. right now it's an extremely slow chat <laughs> <laughs> that's great and that's great. it's just to motivate each other to continue applying, even if you fell the first three times, like I did, and continue going until, well, I failed twice. 
I'm hoping that the third time's the charm for me. Woohoo! Um, so there's uh, that Twitter chat. Uh, another resource that I post, I put on the agenda is my podcast go, episode 24, which has, again, Luis Pertus, Jennifer Scott, Federico Centeno, and the CEO of the EdTech team, which is in charge of... Ah the innovator program cool who's that monica mark, mark wagner mark oh. wagner yeah so cool. he was on my podcast I, for that episode that's cool, cool. I, I think he has not missed he's only missed maybe one innovator academy <laughs> since it started you know ed tech team has been supporting them forever since it's in, since they were just uh google certified teachers so yes how, how cool is that that's neat Okay, and the other one, a very important um, resource that I have there is the official webinar for MEX20 and Spain, or ESP20, España. Uh, you should fill out that Google form so that you are invited to their official Hangouts. There's going to be three altogether. One of them is just making sure that you are level two certified. And all these hangouts are going to be in March. Cool. Neat. Very good. That's good to know. All right. Um, that's all I have for the certifications. Um, but is there anything else? Any questions? Oh, like comments? I was telling you, like right before uh, Dr. Jackson came in, as far as donors choose, I know like our district is really strict that you you can't use donors choose for PD. Um, you have to, it has to be strictly just for you know materials for class and everything because I guess they see like well, okay, so you know they just don't want to make sure that you're just not saying hey I'm going to go to this conference but you're really doing something else kind of deal. So they kind of put that. Uh, on us, or at least the teachers that are in the classroom. So we can't use donors choose for PD at all. It has to be just for classroom material only. I don't see the logic in that, but I use donors choose so that I can go to professional development and I take personal days on top of that to be able to attend. Yeah. I am not given any day, any days. So if it's donors choose related, then it's a personal day. If it's not through donors choose, it's because either it didn't get funded or because the school is paying for it. So I don't know. Yeah, every, di every district. <laughs> yeah, every no, every district like approaches it differently based on the learning community. So and and just kind of I've seen it across region one. Not some some districts have articulated, um, you know, that they prefer for that not to happen. But then they supplement it in other ways, like they'll have an educational foundation that you can um, apply to, and then they'll have other methods that teachers can seek out funding. Um, that's what I've seen in some of the proactive uh, communities that we have. Yeah, I think in the one, of the, one, area. one of the things was too that kind of brought all this about is because there was a lot of teachers putting up projects, which is great, but then um, some teachers started using, which one was it, GoFundMe or stuff like that. So there's no accountability of those that money. So they were buying Chromebooks and they were buying like, let's say 10 Chromebooks, but how much in reality did they really get because it wasn't tied to a school account or anything, it was going to their personal account. So then that's when they started putting those restrictions and saying, okay, no more of this. Donors choose is the only thing that you can use but not for PD. It has to be just straight for uh, classroom material. So like Maggie said, you know, it's just, I guess each district does things when what they see is the benefit, you know. But regardless, hey, I love those options that um, Carlos shared, the Robin Hood, you know, buying some stocks and stuff like that. I think I'm just, you know, personally, like I've, I've been saving up money. So for yeah. um, one of the things that I've learned for the last three years in this position, is I always make it a point to every year I set aside 10% of my salary for PD. 
to invest in myself. Wow, so that's, that's that's one of the things that I do. So uh, this will probably be <laughs> take up that ten percent. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know what? It'll be well worth it, and it'll the return on investment will be significant with the connections you make, the experience you have, and just being able to just put yourself out there and right. gain some new experiences. So it's really exciting. <laughs> hey, let me make a, one more suggestion. You may have already covered this, but um, my husband and I get travel points off our credit card. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I did have to pay for my airfare, but we stayed in a hotel with travel points. Oh, nice. Uh, so, nice. so we didn't have to pay for the hotel. So um, look around and, uh, it, you know, you maybe you can swap over to something that has some travel. Ah, wow, that's a great suggestion. Or even airfare points, um, and then you use that to to find, you know that because that's your own personal stuff. So mm -hmm. um, you can decide to to do that, and um, that helped helped us because otherwise we never would have gone unless we could use that for the hotel. Perfect. Nice. That's such a great suggestion. And I see what Carlos is typing in Airbnb. Or yeah, somebody <laughs> somebody mentioned that in back in when I applied Stay for New Airbnb. York, and they said that uh, Airbnb should be one of your options, especially if you're going to be with several people sharing the same cost. It will yeah. dramatically lower your cost. So, uh, yeah. Shotgun, Carlos, were you my roommate, Carlos? <laughs> Definitely. Oh, you have to try Verbo, V R B O, because Verbo has been around longer than Airbnb. V R B O, V R B O, Verbo. I haven't tried either one of those. I'm I'm too chicken. It, it, With a B, um, like a V R B as in boy, and then O Verbo, like Verbo, but with a B. No, I'm Ricardo. No, it's, it's virtual reality. Okay, virtual you, you, reality do it, you do it. And then Bo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Verbo. Virtual reality. <laughs> it, I wouldn't know you say mind. that. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's always on my mind, virtual reality. <laughs> Funny. Okay, that's cool. All right. Any other suggestions? No, not only that. Well, I, I want to make a suggestion to, to, and I'm sure Carlos has already been doing it, but for Maggie, like when you apply or if you intend to apply, you know, go and connect with as many innovators as you can and just reach out to them and send them messages and say, hey, can we meet? Can we meet? I have met some of the nicest people that are so willing to help because of they've seen the way their experience has transformed them and they just they're so passionate and they're willing to listen and give you suggestions and you know they've been helping me formulate my, like what i'm trying to do but it's just getting that how might we statement down right so they've been so helpful with that so reach out to them what i did i, I spoke with micah shippy about two weeks ago and he's like all right so we we worked out the problem he gave me the suggestions and then he goes go on twitter and just type in hashtag future or hashtag uh, GEI. And I just added all the innovators. I don't even care who they were. I saw a lot of them, I knew who they were, but I just added them and I reached out to a lot of them and sent them a Calendly link. And I've been meeting with them last week and this week I've got a couple more meetings set up, but the wealth of information that they have is amazing. And so it's just, even, even if it doesn't happen, the, just like we were talking about earlier, that that uh, extending of that that friendship and that contact that's valuable too as well. So it's been great to help me get out of that comfort zone and really just reach out for that help, and it, it's paid off in dividends. Awesome! Thank you for that a suggestion. I'm gonna look into it. I I I had kind of been sitting on the idea, but we'll see. Keep well, you posted. Stand up, girl. Stand up. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, that would be cool. A, tri a trio from the Rio Grande Valley. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That would be awesome. Representing our gig over there. Yeah. Regardless of where it is over there. <laughs> We've got to do a lot of chicken plates then. A lot of chicken. Like, yes. You know, Plate cells. <laughs> <laughs> we can sell tamales. 
tamales, there we go. <laughs> okay, it's awesome. All right, so the next one is going to be the fonts here. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, my portion, usually what I like to do is I like to present just on pretty neat tools that can help not only yourselves, but students as well. So a couple of things that I'm bringing back from uh, TCA that I love to share um, is the first one that just really blew my mind. Um, and many of you may be familiar with it, but you know, you guys that have Google sites or create websites and uh, the flat icon, the add-on for Google Slides is awesome. So let me just show you here and I'm gonna go ahead and pop this here real quick. Let me present my screen. All right, so here I have my slide. Can you all see my slide here? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, cool. So then, to just go to add-ons and then here is where is it icons from flat icon click start and this just blew my mind because i was like look at this this makes things so much easier for me oh wow it just drag and drop I mean, I love flat icons. Icon, but... um hold on why isn't it dropping in there oh there we go it was already dropping it's in there slow. But, yeah yeah so okay. it's just a little slow there but all the icons are there you can search for those icons and just pop them in there um, let me do a couple more. I'm not sure if it's just lagging. Uh, but anyway, instead that of dragging, option... try just clicking. Oh, you're right. Yeah, there you go. You're right. You're so right. As you can tell, I, I still haven't used this. There you go. Insert uh, with high fidelity. But I'm, I have a project that I'll be doing for the summer for teachers. So now I can go even to type in Google and find maybe like uh, the Chrome icon here and then just insert this, put it in yellow. You can make little badges for your, for the teachers, so on and so forth. So you can go ahead and put those in there. So that one just blew my mind because I was like, now I don't have to worry about copying and pasting or dragging and things of that yeah. sort. Flat icon right there, get the add on. It is awesome. Love it. All right guys. So the other one that I want to share with you, actually, I learned about this prior to TCA, but it did come up again at TCA, which is a vid reader, or I think you can, uh, it's also known as snack vids. So let me show you the way this works. And I'll go back here to just this page. So what it does is you can actually read your YouTube video. And I'm going to use this YouTube video by Claudio Savala. If you don't know who he is, follow his videos. He'll show you a lot of neat stuff to do on uh, Adobe Spark on your on your phone or Adobe Post and uh, great stuff. So I'll just copy the link and I'll go back to VidReader and through the use of machine learning and AI and all that mm -hmm. stuff, I click read and it breaks it down into like snack bite size. It pretty much transcribes the video. So wow. it'll go and you can download the transcript which is awesome and then when you down you can do a word search um and so that is here you go download transcript so that might be something of value if you have students that you know or maybe you find some content that's really good but you just want the written portion of it you can go ahead and get that transcribed so you guys can get very creative with this i know that I, many of you can see the just the great tool that this can be. So wanted to share that with you. And again, that's Vid Reader. And on the agenda, all, all, all of it is linked. So it'll take you straight to where you need to go. So that way you don't have to waste a lot of time. On One that, of my favorites. That's oh, awesome. go ahead. Um, I can see it to get show notes for podcasts. Yes, wow. that's correct show notes for podcasts and things of that sort. So this is something that is great. So look at that, it'll even give you the little time, but just keep in mind, not it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but at least you can go in there and you can go ahead and make a little bit of changes later on in, in the editable version of a PDF should you need to. But this is something that I figured many of you can see the potential in this. And so wanted to share that with you. Very um, cool. Awesome, awesome. The next one is one of my, I, I, it's old faithful to me because it, this tool was the tool that made my master's program 
oh, yeah. so much easier when I had to create <laughs> uh, tutorial videos. And even now in my job, I shared it with my assistant soup. And she's IO Red crazy. So <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We, we just call ourselves the IO Reds because we use this all the time for quick tutorials. So for example, I'll just go ahead and, and this is free by the way. I do have a paid version that the school pays for that has just a little bit more features, uh, but just even the free version is good enough. So I'll click on IO Red and let's say I wanna create a tutorial here on how to, I'll go ahead and click start and let's say how to create an event. So I'll click here on the ad. I'll click here on the ad title, I'll put demo. I'll click here to change the date, uh, maybe add guest, click here. And I'll just put here, let's see if Carlos Mr. G shows up. And this is only a demo, I'll go ahead and click on i won't click through yeah i'll click on save just go all the way through but I, I i'll click don't send and i'll just go ahead and click on my icon and then i'll click on done and it pretty much just traces your clicks and it fills this in for you it says the first step is to open google calendar wednesday february 26th you can go in here and you can edit this and say the first thing to do is blah 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 now, if you need to mask something, there might be some information there that you don't want anybody else to see. You click on the masking tool, and then you would just drag there, if you don't, for example, and click yes, I'm sure, and it'll mask it. And then it'll go to the next page. So let's say that I'm done with this one. I'll go to the next step, and notice, click add title. So it already fills this in for you through the use of AI but you can go back and you can change this in red to black again, or oh, I'm sorry, you can change it back to just the regular color black. So it doesn't seem like, oh, you're yelling at the person or they don't get the wrong idea. You can also add audio. Now the audio can come in and it'll finish saving all of this. So let's say, so you can pick English or all of these other languages to Spanish. And then you can choose Miguel as a voice. And I'll just go ahead and generate all the steps. And of course, I'm giving you just the real quick version. Uh, and then when you play, let's go to this one. Okay, that didn't do it that well because it just read it in the Spanish accent, but just kind of play around with it. But you can record your own voice as well. But like I said, one of the things too, that's the added value is just the ability to just click away and then you can come back and edit, remove pages if needed. You can go ahead and mask and add your own audio to this. And then when you're done, you can save it. I'll go ahead and preview and finish. And then you can preview this. And this is the way the teachers will see it. They'll see with the paid version, I get to put our district icon on there. So that's cool. And then this is what the teacher would see. They can try it interactively or they can watch the video, print a PDF as well. So I'll, if I put the video version, it all it does. Click that title. <laughs> click that title. <laughs> so if you notice, well, click make these yet dates. So we just need to work on the Spanish version there of it. But like I said, <laughs> this, this will definitely save you some time when you need to make some quick, quick video. So let's say I'm finished with this. What I love here is just this short link right here that you, get, you can send, or you can embed it into a website. And uh, so that's the beautiful part about it. So IORAD has been very faithful. Uh, it's been great. So I wanted to share It's that. been rad. It's been it rad. It has been very <laughs> rad. I must awesome. say it's been very <laughs> rad. And then just sometimes we need a, an annotation tool. And the one that I ran into this week, and because uh, there's others that I've used, but I ran into Zoho, which is a Chrome extension. And you know, this one I liked because it was very clean and clear. So I'll just go ahead and say, I want a focused area. And so let's say I want this area here. And to me, it just seemed very easy to use. You've got, you know, you can add some squares or rectangles. You can add some circles there. You've got some annotation tools here that you can use, highlighters. What I love is the arrows as well. 
So you can go ahead and put several arrows as needed and it's very quick. You can add your text and say, this is Zoho and you can continue typing away. And up here you have the option changing text color and if you want a text outline or not. You can also uh, insert a couple of icons here for uh, correct or wrong or numbering. So maybe you will say, please don't hit that, you know? Uh, and then of course you've got your cropping tool that you can use here. But like uh, Dr. Karen said, it's fair, fairly quick and easy to use. And then once you click done, you can go ahead and share, you know, via these options here, upload it to your cloud drive, which will upload to your Google Drive. You can pull from your Google Drive if you need to, or you can annotate another image. So again, this is pretty practical. Like I said, I found it very easy, intuitive to use, and very quick, like Dr. Jackson said. So I wanted to share these tools with you because I know that as you play around with them, you'll definitely have some wonderful ideas on how to use these. So that's my time, guys. That's <laughs> awesome. Yay. Good job, hey, Hans. May, may I ask one question? Sure. The With Zoho, you can do it just on whatever's on your screen, right? Anything that is on your screen. So for example, let's say if I go here, uh, if I click on Zoho, I, let's go ahead and do part of a page. Oh, so, gotcha. And then, yeah, so you part of a page. There. Yeah, selected. I, I don't think I selected it correctly. I think I clicked too, too fast, too quick. So oh, let me try God. that one more time. Part of a page. And so let's say I just want this part capture. And then that's what's brought in here. Nice. So like that's that. really cool. And and like you said, I, I think one of the fascinating parts, and that's what drew, drew my attention, was how quick and easy it was to do that. Can you demo real quick the whole page? The whole page, sure. Let me go ahead and go back to this. And I'll go here and I'll go full page. And that's where it's gonna do the whole page. And there's a whole page right there. There it is. Mm -hmm. And now awesome. I can put my arrow, uh, let me see here, My I'll click on this arrow put my arrow here and say like, yes to this video, no to this video, or here's Carlos, follow him. Mm -hmm. And then I can make the lines either yeah, dotted awesome. too as well. And of course, like you saw there with the lines too as well. And I can click on the line and then now I can say, okay, I want the thick line or I want the thinner line. And I want to change the color of that line. And so there's the whole page right there. All right. Awesome. All right. Cool, Maybe very cool. cool. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you letting me share. Carlos, thank you also, as usual, with our meetings, getting to share some great tools with you guys. Thank you. And I think I'm going to change the extension I already have for this one. I use PicMonkey. So I was looking at some of the features, but I got to go back and see. So, yeah. And like I said, hey, sometimes, you know, you can have more than one because some some may do something a little bit better yeah. than others yeah. and so on. And, and, and I always like to give choice because it's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, it works for some and not for others. This may not, but at least you have it in your tool belt and you can have it at the ready if you need it. Love it. It's awesome. Awesome stuff. I can't wait to try the Flaticon. I hadn't seen yeah. that one. Yeah, that that, add, really, yeah that's that going to be awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah. That'll be good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to count everything, oh. everything. <laughs> Already put it on. <laughs> That's super cool. All right, uh, Maggie, you're up. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh, what do I do? There we are. There we are. Because <laughs> <laughs> my husband's calling me. He's cooking dinner. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Yeah, I know. A ver. Presentar <laughs> tu pantalla completa. There we are. <laughs> all right. Tell you so if I mess up, it's because I'm I'm doing all this in Spanish. Estás presentando tu pantalla. There we are. <laughs> nice. There we go. Bueno. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You do? Because I don't. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll see, I just we'll wanted see. to share that the um on the agenda the link that's here. Oh, I'm Maggie. Um, here this link will take you to the website. Um, this year, the technology conference at the island is a free event and uh, we are looking for presenters. So I wanted to make sure
to let you all know that if you have a, a proposal, we'd love to have it uh, right here on call for presenters on that link. It'll take you um, to the site that has the link right here. Um, and uh, the proposal is due by March the 9th, 2020. Awesome. I'm so looking forward to that. That'd be awesome if y'all could submit something. Also, since I have you on the line, if we want to do like a, here we go, Carlos, IRL in real life, yeah. <laughs> in a real life meetup, uh, that would be a great place. We're going to have the, like we did last year, like a, a, a demo, like a, no, like a demo slam, app slam area with lounge seating and all of that. So we could have it there, but I guess a little later I'll send out like a survey or maybe just a, hey, are y'all interested in, a, in an IRL meetup? And then maybe we could do some something there, um, you know, while we're there. That way we can, you know, kind of see each other and, and say, hey, what's up? How's it going? I already heard back. Maybe, maybe that'll be the celebration point because wouldn't the information, whether the application was accepted, be in by then? I believe yes. so. Well, there you go. Yeah. It, it might just be like a celebratory face to face. <laughs> the applications came in and were <laughs> Yeah. If so I understand I this correctly. That that, um, I think May 28th and 29th, right? Should be the, the academy. Oh, yes, the actual like academy. That. Yes. Yeah. You, so you this would be now. like 10 days before the actual yeah. academy. <laughs> yeah, it would. It, it would be wow. something like you leave the conference straight to the to the airport. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, might as well just take a boat. We'll take a boat from the island and all the way over there to drop us off in like right. Cancun or something and then just go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So that that's it for me. I just wanted to, to share that piece of information uh, all right, with you, you all. That sounds so cool. All right. Uh, any uh, anything else to add to the agenda? No. What's for dinner? I gotta ask my husband. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's he serving us? <laughs> I don't know. It looks delicious, though. Whatever I'll he be made. Over there. If I leave now, I should make it in about six hours. You know, Doctor Karen, you actually need to try my husband's menudo. It's off the hook. Ooh. His tamales are amazing. Anything he cooks, he's an awesome yeah. cook. I was, I'm so hey. blessed to be married to a cook. There, yes, amen. My uh, my husband's a retired fireman, and he is he's a cook like no other. So, yes, a husband who cooks is a blessing. Yes, it is. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So before we sign off, uh, there's one feature that I want to demo. I'm not sure if this is going to work. So let me start by presenting my window. And it's going to be a little bit of a Inception type of presentation, very meta. And I'm not sure if you're looking down here. I'm covering, uh, at least on my screen, I'm covering uh, fonts. And yeah, yeah. there's this section right here that says use a phone for audio. So if I don't want to use my microphone, I want to use my phone instead. I click right here. Now. What I do is I either dial in or enter my number so it calls my phone. So I'm going to try the dial in method. So I'm going to get my phone, which is a pixel. Really? Hmm, I would have never guessed. <laughs> Guess who my phone service provider is. I wonder. <clears throat> Google Voice. <clears throat> Close. Google Fi. Google Fi. Uh -huh. Okay. So. I'm calling New York. Welcome to Hangout. Enter the meeting pin followed by the pound key. All right, so I'm going to enter the meeting key. One, eight, three, eight, two, nine, and hashtag. Thank you. Use your phone to listen and speak to the meeting. Okay. So now I'm using my phone. Actually, I can no longer use, um, which is a perfect opportunity to wear my fedora. I, I can no longer use my microphone. I have to use my phone now because they cut me off from the microphone. 
which unfortunately means that for anybody listening to the podcast or watching the video, they cannot hear you anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use my phone, but a little bit different. I'm going to put it on speaker. And now they can hear me and they should be able to hear you as well, but they're going to be hearing you through my phone. Very cool. Awesome. All right. And that's the only thing I wanted to say. I thought it was pretty exciting because you know how sometimes you're in the middle of a call and you cannot hear what other people are saying or whenever, mainly because you don't have that bandwidth. Your camera still works, but you can hear clearly if their bandwidth is good. Very cool. Very cool. All right. That's all I have. Oh, by the way, um, don't forget to, uh, I was going to say post attendance. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Let me do it right now. I did. I'm here. I was the last one in, first attender. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do mine. I was too busy chit chatting. Okay, the link is still there, right? Yeah, it's still yeah. there. Okay. Hey Carlos, thank you for including me in your group. How long can I hang out with y'all? Hey, before I have to get out. Not <laughs> always. <laughs> yes, uh, we would love to keep you. And uh I, I wouldn't want you to leave. So, hey, as long as you want to have us and uh, as long as Central Texas doesn't have theirs, then I'm sure you'll stay with us. Once they have theirs, um, I would hope they don't steal you away from us. Well, thank you. Good. Well, I appreciate the welcome and uh, I'll try to continue to be a contributing member. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Karen. It was nice meeting you. Good to meet you. Hey, I was just thinking earlier, like what Maggie was saying, like how through Carlos, and then I, I met Dr. Karen through Carlos, obviously, because of this gag in the group, and then Maggie, and then in my mind, I was thinking, hey, that's less degrees of separation than Kevin Bacon, so that's pretty <laughs> awesome. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so that means we're a lot cooler. Yes, I agree. <laughs> That's right. Awesome, guys. Well, it's been fun. It's been a great evening hanging out with you guys. Yes. All right. Good night, guys. Y'all take care. Thank you for Good everything. Good night. Bye. Bye. Later. Goodbye. Everyone else has left the call. All right. Thank you. Well, that's it. That's a wrap up, and thank you for listening. I'm G. Cheers.